Greetings, nerdlings. Today, we're going to be discussing part one of viruses. So this right here is a very common virus. It's called a bacteriophage because it attacks bacteria. So viruses are not alive. If you remember nothing else about viruses, remember that they are not living, meaning they do not exhibit all characteristics of life. So viruses are simply a nucleic acid, meaning either DNA or RNA, that is enclosed in a protein coat. They do not eat or metabolize, and they do not replicate by themselves. They must have a host cell in order to replicate. And understand that I'm using the word replicate, not reproduce, because only living things can reproduce. Viruses are not living, so they replicate. They do not reproduce. So the structure of a virus. They have an inner core that is composed of nucleic acid. So if you look right here, this is the inner core of nucleic acid. Now that nucleic acid can either be RNA or DNA. They also have what's called a capsid. This is a protective outer layer made up of protein. So right here, we have our capsid that's protecting that nucleic acid core. We have an envelope which is made out of a lipid layer found on the outside of the capsid. So if you think about lipid, what are they? If you said fats, then you're correct, because lipids are fats. We also have glycoproteins that are helping to construct the virus. These are molecules on the outside of the virus which help it to attach to the host cell. So these right here are glycoproteins. Same thing on this diagram right here, all these little kind of furry mushroom looking things, those are glycoproteins. So again, viruses are non-living. They do not exhibit all criteria for life. They are parasites. They need a host cell in order to replicate their own DNA or RNA. And they can only survive intracellularly. Viruses are very small, only 0.03 microns and they're about one-tenth the size of bacteria. Now keep in mind that bacteria are cells. They're prokaryotic cells to be exact. And cells are alive. Viruses vary in shape, but they usually occur in geometric shapes. They either have a DNA or RNA core with an outer protein coat or capsid. Some may have an additional envelope of a lipid, protein, or carbohydrates. So they have a very small amount of genetic material, only about 10 to 100 genes, which is very, very small compared to other cells. And they only have about 5,000 bases. They cannot live independently. So again, they are not alive, they are parasites. And most are specific in infecting. So for example, the flu virus gives you the flu, and they're typically named after whatever they create. So the measles virus, causes measles. The mumps virus causes mumps. The HIV virus causes HIV. And the rabies virus causes rabies. So all of those are named after the virus that has affected them. So these are a couple pictures of the different types of viruses. So earlier we talked about how they have geometric shapes. So these are some of the different shapes that viruses occur in. Now the two most common ones you'll see are right here are influenza viruses. These look kind of similar to the HIV virus as well. And then this guy right here. This is a bacteriophage. Bacteriophages kill bacteria. They look kind of like creepy little spiders. So viral replication. How do they replicate? There are two different ways in which viruses replicate. The lytic cycle, which occurs very quickly, and the lysogenic cycle, which occurs much more slowly and takes a very long time. So we're going to discuss the lytic cycle first. So the lytic cycle destroys the host cell, and this occurs in five steps. You want to make sure that you take very good notes over the lytic cycle, because I guarantee this will be on the test, and you do need to know the steps in which it occurs. So step number one. The virus has to attach, and it is a very specific host, so it has to find a weak spot on this host cell. 
So again, number one, they attach. Me, 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 They attach. So then we have entry. This is when the virus injects nucleic acid only into the host cell. Some animal cells will actually engulf the virus themselves by endocytosis and help them out a little bit, unfortunately. The third step is replication. This is when the virus actually replicates its DNA or RNA inside the host cell, and it destroys the DNA and RNA that the host cell already has. So again, we have attachment for the first step, entry for the second step, replication for the third step. Then we have the formation or assembly. I like to think of formation or assembly kind of like an angry army of viruses with their little pitchforks. They're assembling, they're getting ready to attack and break out of the cell and infect other cells and kill all of these cells. They're an angry army of viruses with little pitchforks. <clears throat> So, they form or assemble, and new protein coats are also formed. So they're getting ready to break out of the cell. Once they have formed, then they lyse. Lyse means the same thing as lytic. So lysis means to split. So lyse means that that cell is going to split open. So that's when lysis occurs. This, the cell splits open, and it releases this angry army of viruses into our interstitial fluid and they go on to affect other cells. So right here we have the cycle of the lytic cycle. So we have our attachment right here, then we have penetration or entry of the virus. After the virus enters, it multiplies or replicates, starts forming that army. So like I was saying, we have the starting of replication of that virus. So the virus starts replicating its own RNA and DNA inside the cell. It takes it over. It destroys the host cell's DNA and RNA, and it inserts its own. So once this happens, then we have that construction or assembly of that little angry mob of viruses with little pitchforks because you're getting ready to invade other cells. So we have the assembly of the viruses, their protein coats form around them again, so they're getting ready to lyse out of the cell. Then the last step is the lysis. This is when the cells actually burst open and the virus comes out. Then we have our virus that goes on and it infects another cell. And that's the lytic cycle. Stay tuned for the lysogenic cycle next time.